Hello everybody and welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this cake that featured meringue pops, meringue drops, a white chocolate drip, and some sugar shards. So if this sounds interesting, stick around. So first thing we're going to do is make the, the meringue pops. Now I'm not going to sh tell you the exact recipe as we go here. I will link it in the description box on how I make these meringues. But what I showed you there is my meringue pop sticks and then um, I'm using a 1M tip and a round tip to pipe the pops and to make the dollops. I wanted one round tip and then one with some texture. So I made the meringue and then I just go ahead and I put it in a piping bag. And then what I'm gonna do here is I put a little dollop on the silicone mat and then I stick my popsicle stick to that. And that's how you get it attached to the meringue pop. And then once you do that, go ahead and just use your one M tip and swirl a rosette pattern. There are lots of different ways that you can make meringue pops, but I wanted these to be more simplistic because there's a lot going on with this cake. And since I had so much meringue, I just went ahead and I made some dollops, some with the one M and then some with just the round tip. Now, once you get these pipes, you're going to bake them. And these baked for one hour and then I prop the door open with a wooden spoon and let them cool for another hour so that will help prevent some of the cracking. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the sugar shards. What this is is just my isomalt from scratch recipe that I make and I am just pouring, going to pour it on a silicone mat and just use that and, and break it into smaller pieces. I'm making them kind of wavy. I, I poured it out on the on the mat and made it um, kind of a wave pattern by putting that towel underneath it so that the shards had some movement. And what you saw me doing right there is I was waiting for the bubbles to subside after you add your food coloring, which was Wilton Delphinium Blue food coloring. If you let it sit for just a just a little bit there, your bubbles will subside, which gives you a clearer, more perfect um, isomalt. And something to keep in mind here that when you pour your isomalt on your silicone, you're gonna need to move pretty quickly because it does uh, set up fast. So once you put it on there, go ahead and make your pattern on there and you're gonna have in the valleys, it's gonna be a little thicker, but that's okay, it still works out well. And then set that aside and let that come to room temperature, cool down and set up. So we have our meringues baking and we have our sugar setting up. So now we're gonna go ahead and stack our cake. And I just did four layers of six inch cake rounds and this is just a white cake recipe. And I'm just filling it with buttercream. Now I've said this before, when I do these for orders, these are just for demonstration purposes. But when I do do these for orders, I, um, I do make fancier flavor com combinations, quite a few of them. You just haven't seen those yet because I have not been able to share very much when it comes to recipes on here. Basically just because the bakery I work at, we use a lot of my recipes and I have been, uh, I've told my boss that I would not share at this point, but maybe sometime soon. So go ahead and there is a, my buttercream was a little on the thicker side, so I didn't need to do a dam, but if your buttercream is thinner, go ahead and add some butter, some powdered sugar to some of the buttercream and use that as a dam. Thicken it up and use it as a dam to keep your filling from spilling out the sides. And you can go ahead and you can pop that in your refrigerator for 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes to set up before you do your crumb coat. I can't remember if I did that this time or not. I don't think I did because my buttercream, buttercream was a little on the thicker side, so it wasn't moving around much. But do pop it into your refrigerator or freezer to set up in between layers of buttercream. So I'll, after the crumb coat, I put it in the freezer for 10 minutes to set up. And in the meantime, I added some of that delphinium blue into my buttercream to color the buttercream itself. And if you want, if your buttercream tends to be on the little on the yellow side, because sometimes butter, they add the yellow to it for the looks of it. But that can cause some problems when it comes to coloring your buttercream. Go ahead and add a little white first if you want to, to get rid of that yellow, and then add your color. And here are my 
meringue pops and meringue dollops after they have cooled. Now I'm just transferring them to another um, tray. Just to get them off the silicone mat, doesn't really matter, you could leave them on there. And then I just set those aside till I was ready to work with them. Those are fine at room temperature. And now I'm removing the silicone mat from the back of my sugar or isomalt. Isomalt is a brand, but um, sugar is when it's from scratch. I just call it sugar. But <laughs> and I'm breaking them into smaller pieces, smaller shards. And I am aware that there are circles on the isomalt. That is because the mat I used was met, is meant for macarons. It has those markings marked out in it. But when you use your creme brulee torch like I'm using here, that gets rid of those marks. Now just be careful when you're doing this. I know I have my hands really close to the flame. Um, I do this quite a bit, so I know not to touch it right away. And this is sped up for um, the sake of making the video shorter. So there is a little bit more time between when I am torching it and when I'm touching it. You just can't tell. And if you feel safer, use some heat resistant um, gloves while you're working with this just a little added touch of safety isomalt is very very hot and it can cause very severe burns so just be very careful and once I have those have cooled again I um, just sprayed them with some confectioners glaze and what that does is seals them and adds a little bit more shine it keeps them from getting um, cloudy your sugar likes to get cloudy over time and this kind of gives you buys you a little more time and set that aside. Now I am making some white chocolate ganache for the drip. I will add the recipe here on the in the description below. But what it is, is it's basically two and a half to three times chocolate combined with um, heavy cream. So say you're using one cup of cre heavy cream, use two and a half to three cups of white chocolate. Every chocolate is different when it comes to proportions, but for a white chocolate drip, you want it to be a little on the runnier side, but not too runny. So melt those together, and I like to use a whisk. It prevents um, so many air bubbles when you're mixing it together. And then I did add some white food coloring because white chocolate is actually a creamy color, and I wanted it to be white, white, so you can go ahead and add some white to that. And then I just added some texture onto this cake with just a silico silicone pastry brush. I just, after, I added a little bit more buttercream and then used that to add some texture. Honestly, in hindsight, it would have been fine without it, but I, for, you know, in my mind, I wanted to have some texture on the buttercream, but it was, either way, you just don't really notice it in the final design. There's so much going on on this cake. And then I just used some sprinkles and I'm just brushing, brushing them up on the bottom just for a little added touch of something blingy on the bottom. And this is my little test here because you need to set your ganache to the side to, firm, to um, cool down a little bit. And there's your little test. Put it a little bit on a surface like that, a plate, something like that. So you can watch how it drips down before you do it on the cake. Or you can do a little test spot in the back of the cake. That's fine too. And I wanted it to drip pretty quite a bit this time so I instead of using a piping bag I just kind of put it in the middle and then just used my spatula and pushed it over the edge I didn't want perfect drips this time and then I'm just I let it firm up you don't see that it looks like I just went right from the other went from one technique to another but I did let it um, chill in the refrigerator for a good half hour to 45 minutes before adding this edible gold leaf and I'm just using a fluffy brush to get it attached to the ganache. The ganache had not set up real firm, so I'm being very ginger with how I'm doing this here. And then just add your decorations. Those lollipop sticks are great for adding some height to your meringue pops. I don't know if you've ever noticed, if you've seen my videos, I like to have some height in my cake toppers. I like them to be substantial. So that way, using the, the popsicle sticks, that's the be uh, perfect way to get them to add some height. And I just added some white silk ranunculuses, and then I'm using some buttercream to attach the dollops, the meringue dollops, just scattered around here and there. And along the side there too, I added some just rosettes that didn't, weren't on a, on a popsicle stick. And then I added some to the back too. That's multi, multiple purpose. It's helping the shard to stay up. And then also if you see the cake from the back, it looks more finished. And then a finishing touch there. I'm just using some buttercream in piping bags with some smaller tips, a smaller 1M. I'm not sure what they are. 
what the numbers are, but it's basically a small 1M and then another very similar tip. So there it is all done, guys. I hope you liked it, and I hope you decide to give meringues a try. They're yummy and super simple to do and a very, very pretty addition to a cake. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you give it a go. And if you do, send pictures to Instagram under the same name. I'd love to see what you do. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.